the the Chris Christie thing. And this, I mean, this is um, the, there's a lot of aspects of this that is uh, obviously that you and I both enjoy. Um, oh, it's so a great much. story. So it is really unraveling uh, for uh, Christy. It's also been fascinating to me to watch. I mean, I've gone on MSNBC uh, over the past couple of weeks uh, talking about uh, Chris Christie. Um, and it is, uh, in many respects, I, I mean, I, it's worth talking about from a meta perspective, just sort of how having an MSNBC who is sort of being relentless in its coverage of this um, is is in some ways. I mean, I, you know, it's hard to sort of uh, provide a counterfactual, uh, but driving some of the investigations on some level. Um, but first off, the big news uh, as of, I guess, last night was that the Bergen record uh, and the Newark Star Ledger and now NBC as well uh, is is basically saying that there are going to be at least 20 aides subpoenaed by the New Jersey Assembly's investigation of this. Now, remember, there's the Assembly's investigation. There's the New Jersey Senate investigation. Jay Rockefeller is doing an investigation on a federal level on the, I think it's the Transportation Committee. I think uh, you've got four of them, right? I mean, you've got the, you've got the the federal, you know, Congress. You've got the state legislature. You've got the state version of the FBI, and you've got the federal D- Justice Department. Am I correct about I that? I don't know. I think I don't know if the federal. Well, the uh, the state version of the FBI is the U.S. Attorney's Office. That's the Department of Justice. The U.S. Uh, Attorney's Office in New Jersey is investigating it. We we have no sense of what they're doing because they're very quiet about it. And there's still some holdovers from the Christie uh, days. Um, so the real action, I think, is in these uh, two legislative bodies in New Jersey who are, are both operating uh, investigations, both headed by Democrats. Um, and then you have that. You know what I'd love them to do, by the way, is subpoena the hell out of some of these uh, some of these party bosses on the Democratic side that endorse this guy. And why don't we find out what the hell they were given? Yeah, to well, him. this is I bet expanding there's bribery into, cases just waiting to come out. And I think some of that has to do with Sandy funds, and that is starting to uh, open up. But the interesting thing is, is that initially, the this special uh, committee in the assembly, it is chaired by a guy named John Wizen Iusku. Wisnowski was now yeah, exactly like that, and. Yep. Originally, he was just there. His committee was just going to subpoena uh, two or three people. They then hired Reed Shar, who was the former federal prosecutor who um, investigated Blagojevich. And then all of a sudden, 17 uh, new subpoenas, including that guy, David Sampson, who was the highest ranking New Jersey official in the um, uh, the Port Authority. This is the guy... He's the chair. I think he's the chairman of the Port Authority, former yes. AG, too. And he's the guy that, that Christie lied about and said that he hadn't spoken to him since the whole thing, which is one of the one of the many lies Christie has told that has been exposed, which is that he had met with him uh, a week later. Yep. So, so, I mean, yes. So what, he's, what did he say to him a week later when he met with him? You know what was he saying to his aides that day when he was spending time the very one of the, on one of the very days that, that the traffic jam was going on? We now have pictures of him, you know, with a bunch of these aides. Uh, I think this is hugely important and really. Um, uh, oh, he's you know, in trouble. He's in big trouble. And the amazing thing is, like, look, you know, if if you watch MSNBC uh, during prime time, uh, there are two New Jersey state legislators. Uh, on every primetime channel, min- at minimum. And there are New Jersey reporters. The, the, well, and Steve Kornacki, you know, was, was Steve- came, came up as a New Jersey reporter. Yes. He was at MSNBC. And he, I'm trying to find the tweet now because I retweeted something he sent out. And maybe you'll remember this, Sam. But on the side of what we were talking about before, he sent out, because he's looking through this stuff. And this, again, they did this so blatantly that I, that's why I know Christie's screwed, because this stuff is not going to be, it's going to come out hand over fist. And one of the ones he, he exposed was how one of the guys who endorsed Christie 
magically got like this huge number of funds for this new library or something uh, in, in his city, you know, right afterwards, right as, you know, when you compare it to follow up, you know, Steve, is it Steve Fulop, the, the mayor of Jersey City, who was right. busy having all of his meetings canceled within an hour of each other when he refused to endorse, or the mayor of Hoboken, who asked, needed $100 million in funds, I can't remember what it was, but it was a pretty serious project, and got something like $300,000. Right, in terms um, of Sandy right after Reed, he refused yes. to endorse. Uh, I mean, there's just there's going to be so many examples of this. The pattern will be so clear that there, it'll just be easy. It'll just be that easy. And, and I'm sorry, but one of these people, I don't know who yet or, you know, some of them, but when he's sitting there, this guy, Wild, David Wildstein, he's busy talking it up, you know, how he's missed, Chris Christie was Mr. Jock and school president, you know, which when you need to brag about that stuff in a press conference and you're trying to protect your job, it kind of tells you something about his psyche anyhow right. and what's going on in his brain and, and how insec- deeply insecure this man is, which explains a lot. But he's busy sort of trashing wild. Oh. He had hid them or tried to hide them. So it seems clear to me at this point now that he's trashed Wildstein that all you need is one guy like him to tell the truth. I mean, they're basically begging for immunity. Uh, give him immunity, a few others. Immunity. Maybe, you know, Bridget, whatever her name is, will end up being uh, stupid and loyal and she feels like going to prison. But some of these people won't feel like that. When there's this many people that have witnessed something, I'm sorry, they're, they're just going to gonna be a couple of them that are going to talk. Or, or this will be, you know, that 1% of cases where that doesn't happen. And so I don't, this guy's screwed because I, I don't doubt for a second that he knew. At the very least, he knew they were doing something. He told them not to tell him exactly what it was and figured it out as it was going on and lied ever since then and, and, and committed obstruction of justice and a variety of other things. Right. That's at the very least. Right. At it's the very easy. least, he the, the real problem for him is going to be that day that he said, I was moving the cones because he clearly knew by that point. Uh, yes. And I would I would guess that he knew before then. I mean, I still contend that the real sort of like unraveling will be when we find out who that other person was in that text uh, message exchange right. with Wildstein about the kids. Um, I think he ends up resigning. Yeah. Um, I don't think I think I don't think he's going to get impeached because I think they're going to threaten to impeach him. Um, it's going to be like Nixon, and he's going to take the walk instead of being impeached, is what my guess is with him. And maybe, maybe we'll see something like where, um, you know, uh, like it, it's like a hostage situation, and they bring Bruce Springsteen out, and they just say, you know, uh, he just says, Governor Christie, if you resign now, I promise we can have lunch together, or something like that. And, uh, I'll let you touch you know, my... Why don't you touch my sweaty bandana? I'm gonna, you're gonna get backstage passes for one of my concerts and just admit you did wrong. And it would be cool if they brought Bruce in to just sort of negotiate the whole thing. Right. This we're gonna, you know, and sort of did it as a concert with like, you know, so we could hang out there and you know, I don't know. That would be the best in the world. That that parody was fabulous. I uh, I enjoyed it, it. it, it, it because it is, and if you know the inside baseball of it, which a lot of people who are follow this stuff do, is you know that Christie is hopelessly in love with Bruce Springsteen. So the fact that his his idol was mocking him makes it that much more painful. And I just I have to admit, I'm a bad human being. The shot and fruit from this it <laughs> could wake me up in the morning and power me the entire day. <laughs> 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 On that note, uh, Cliff, may uh, may Chris Christie continue to uh, to add fuel to the fire that gets you through the day. Uh, <laughs>